Alright, let's. Let's do this event. It's almost over. And there's the new one, main event of the version. Got launch ready. Uh, I gotta check this one. It should be done by now, right? Monstats water. Uh, let's go. It's been a while. Into Monstats. Uh, uh, uh. Oh yeah, I got no flat. Uh, since last stream. It's pretty good. I'm not even sure what this event is about. Um, oh yeah, I think I will say something about reading a book when you go lunch. Okay, got it. But fish taste best when they're freshly blasted. Grill them over a fire and they'll turn extra crispy and smell so good. <laughs> Don't worry, Jean has informed me about all that a while ago. So, I went ahead and placed some orders at Good Hunter. Over the next few days, their chefs will be preparing the best fish fresh from the lake and cooking them right away. Freshly cooked fish served with Klee's favorite spices and my specially prepared desserts. <laughs> I'm sure it'll be just as delicious as your catches. Okay, then I'll trust your taste, Lisa. I promise I'll stay in the city and play Donoko's Bombastic Adventure. I won't go fish blasting or make any trouble for Albedo's friend. Which friend? I'm gonna go look for Mr. Honorary Knight and Paimon now. We just <laughs> casually Is someone came looking into for town. Us? It's pretty rare to see you two together. Sounds like you two just made an important agreement. Mr. Honorary Knight and Paimon! Klee was just thinking about you and then you appeared! How'd you do that? Oh, did you somehow magically hear Klee's thoughts? Oh, little cutie and Paimon, you're here just in time. Looks like I won't have to go to the trouble of writing you a letter now. Hmm, please wish us someone this year. We're brought here by the match of pure coincidence. No. We had some time on our hands and wanted to look for something to read in the library. Uh, anyway, what's Dodoko's fantastic adventure? It sounds way more fun than reading a book. <laughs> it's a new game Lisa made for me. We came up with the name together. You're amazing, Paimon. You remembered the name so quickly. Whoa, you can design games, Lisa? <laughs> Paimon thought that you were just into books. <laughs> I merely drew some inspiration from Shroomsplosion, a game from back when I was a student. It didn't really take too much effort. As long as we keep Klee happy during these unique circumstances, I'm willing to design as many games as she likes. Unique circumstances. Oh, now that Paimon thinks about it, Klee mentioned Albedo's friend, right? Did something happen in Mondstadt? It's not too serious, but the situation still has to be treated with caution. Recently, Fish species native to Sumeru have begun appearing in Cider Lake. Allowing them to spread would put the ecological balance of Mondstadt's waters at risk. Oh. Luckily, Klee noticed some fish she'd never seen before while she snuck out to play. She caught a few and showed them to Kaya. If it weren't for Klee, I'm afraid most of the local species would have already receded by the time ordinary citizens fully grasped the situation. 
And if a change occurs in the underwater ecosystem, it could very well affect the quality of water in Cider Lake. Consequently, the entire wine industry of Mondstadt could be in danger. And that poses a major threat to our economy. <laughs> I saved the day! I even got praised by Master Keen! Good job, Clean. Words are praise indeed. So that's what happened. Oh, good thing Clean noticed the fish before things got out of control. The investigation team sent out a few members to inspect Cider Lake and look for the origin of the intruding species. To avoid disturbing these little invaders, Clee has to keep her treasured bombs away for some time. The investigation team's instruments are extremely sensitive, so any explosion within a certain distance of the lake would affect their data. Jean said that Klee would definitely get bored being cooped up inside the city all the time. Albedo's busy making improvements to the reconnaissance company's experimental equipment, while Kaya just left for a business trip. So the task of looking after her fell on my shoulders. But I'm not bored anymore because Lisa invented Dodoko's Bombastic Adventure! Mr. Honorary Knight and Paimon, let's play together! Honestly. All right, the game table is right over there in the garden. The orders I've placed at Good Hunter will also be delivered there. Okay, the food will be the reward. Please enjoy yourselves. It's not every day you get to play games with Klee, surrounded by the scent of flowers on the breeze, with delicious food delivered right to you. Wait, Lisa, are you not coming with us? Don't you think it'd be a little unfair if the game's creator joined in? I don't want to spoil the fun. The game. Besides, as the librarian, I still have my basic responsibilities to take care of. Uh, that just sounds like another excuse for staying indoors! Run along now. Have fun playing with Klee. We'll take good care of Klee. Thanks okay Lisa. then, we'll catch you later, Lisa! If the game has only one... <laughs> Or maybe an optimal right answer, then that makes sense. If it's something like chess, it's okay for the creator to play. Wait, what? Ah. We're here, Mr. Honorary Knight. This is where we'll play Dodoko's Bombastic Adventure. Ooh, Lisa picked a really good spot. Paimon loves it here already. All right, teach us how to play, Klee. Dodo Adventures. <laughs> yeah, let's play. Uh, Klee? I love the fish are here. Dodoko's Part of that already. With you, Mr. Honorary Knight and Paimon. Thanks for playing with me. Should we walk back home later? Oh, right. I can't stay out too late. I'll behave and go home when it's time for bed. But I know my way home. Let's meet back here in the morning. So we won't be here tonight? Oh, what about you? Hello, great hero of Mustache. I am Helga, delivery person for Good Hunter. How may I help you? Delivery person. Yeah, I deliver orders for the restaurant. It's super simple but enjoyable job. Some customers don't want to cook from scratch or need to host important guests at home. So they place orders in advance and the restaurant sends us to deliver the meal orders to the designated location. Doesn't sound that simple. Doing the same job over and over can be enjoyable. The paint. Uh, really? You think so? But I find it pretty enjoyable myself. No matter when or where, we allow people to easily enjoy their favorite foods. Delivering. Oh. <laughs> Here's a guy accidentally fell and broke my leg and had to stay home and could barely get out of bed. Usually, I'm the one who cooks at home since my dad is a terrible cook. His food is so bad, even he can't stomach it. Uh, moreover, he gets home pretty late so nearby restaurants are all closed by then 
During the time and that I relied on the food delivered by delivery people. The moment we heard knocking on the door, we knew our hunger would be satisfied. That's why I signed up as soon as I recovered. I decided to become the fastest and most reliable food delivery person, bringing my customers their satisfying meals. I heard there was a delivery person nicknamed the Golden Shadow. Ah, is that us from those commissions? No matter how many the orders were or how great the distance, he could deliver them in record time. Suddenly, Golden Shadow was a temporary worker hired by the restaurant from the Adventures Guild and only stayed a few days, leaving only the legend of their speed. He is an inspiration to me. I also want to become that kind of, well, top delivery person in Altivat. Then keep it up. Just so, keep it up. Thank you for encouragement. Now I feel motivated. Uh, what are we doing here? Alright, Sarah said that the Good Hunter has received a special order to deliver the food to the Spark Knight at regular times. So she won't forget to eat her lunch while she's on important missions. Seeing the Spark Knight playing games so carelessly and happily, um, I mean executing important missions, I'm happy to be of help. A colleague of mine isn't so lucky, she received an order and had to deliver the food somewhere near one of the cliffs near Brightcrown Mountains. Okay, that's marked can i find something there delivering food or a monster is starting enough but you think she had to go across mountains and rivers carrying the backpack fortunately the customer is a wealthy merchant who always tips well she could have delivered dozens of orders and earned days worth of wages in the time it takes to make the trip otherwise <laughs> Uh, I don't know by name. It's not here. Ah, it's around here. Yeah, it's close to Cider Lake. Maybe it's the team. Okay, let's play those things. Then we'll take a look around. See if we can find stuff. It's locked still. Ah, okay. I have to complete the previous ones. Alright. Um... The local's little trip, watch the position of the spiky fish and choose the right special jumpy dumpty. After a special jumpy dumpty throw, find the right time to let it explode. Ah, so I detonate it, which will make most of the special jumpy dumpty blow up the most spiky fish. That looks like space invaders. Defeat Spankfish Warrior using special Jump Dumpty to obtain 1 point. Defeat the Spiky Fish King to obtain 2 points. Special Jump Dumpties of different colors have different explosion area effects. Keep their unique traits in mind and throw them well for a higher score. After the special jump dump to throw, if it comes in contact with spiky fish or objects along its path, you automatically explode. After throwing special jump damage, you can press the throw button and gain cause to explode immediately. You can use this match to make most of the jump dumps explosion radio. Radii. Next sideways. Ah, oh, or. Ah, okay, I think we prefer that. Uh, uh, ah, that's the area effect. Uh, six of those. Ah, okay. Press at the right time. Oh, damage. Okay, seems simple enough. Oh, only two of those? Or did I spin one by mistake? Uh, 
let's try again. Damage my camera. Okay, I spent one by mistake. Yeah, I, I did get one wrong there. Okay, so hopefully I can do perfect on everyone. Although the challenge is. Okay, um, stage select, that's good. Things usually force me back. The wall counts as spike stone stronghold. That counts as an enemy opposing my up. Uh, has different description, but it's the same thing. No, I have a different one. Uh, okay, it's a wider plus sign. Uh, uh -huh. uh, ah, okay. Mm. Starts here. Uh, oh, how do I? Oh, I wouldn't get that here. Uh, only... Okay, I have to save those two for those yellows. Uh... Uh... Oh, damage. I didn't notice that one there. I... Retry. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, it makes sense that Lisa wouldn't come here now. The ship will probably know exactly where to place them. Okay, let's figure out when we get there. Uh, uh, so grass will be obliterated after a single explosion. Ah, uh, okay, so I have to bless twice. Mm. No, uh, that and that. Uh. Okay. I think here and here. Now on the other side, ain't so sure. Oh. oh. Ah. Okay. Let's let's try it. Oh, 
that's not an enemy. That shouldn't be an enemy. Crashable mine. Are good partners who hide themselves near this five fish. Okay, but then it shouldn't be an opposing lineup. After a crash kaboom mine is ignited, it can trigger a second explosion with massive area of effect. However, these explosions can still be blocked by spiky sneak seagrass and spiky stone stronghold. Very well. can go all the way up there. Uh, have three of those. Oh, it didn't... I thought I would get that. Sure, this is like that. Now, I can go back there. Okay, I just, uh, Oh no, I tossed the wrong one. Spiky sneaks seagrass hides special jumpy dumpties. Destroying the seagrass will gain you gain you the aid of additional special jumpy dumpties. Ah. Hmm. This wouldn't get them necessarily. Yeah, I have to test it. Okay. 
No, damage. I have to wait for time. I didn't pay attention. Do the seagrass grants me points? Because I don't think I'll. I can destroy those two. I think that was perfect. I don't think the seagrass. Uh, let me just test one, one more thing here. Okay, seagrass doesn't give me points. It's over already. Hmm. Unstoppable, take that bad fish. Hmm. This game reminds Paimon of the incident happening in Cider Lake. Did Lisa base its theme on that? Yeah. Uh, but come to think of it, why go to the trouble of finding the invading species when they could just ask Clee to blow up every suspicious fish? Reef? Just a fish. They could even give us some bombs and let us handle this. You and Klee are like two peas in a pod. Nope, no bombs for Paimo. <laughs> well, well. From the looks on your faces, it seems like you're having fun. It's Lisa! You're here! We loved playing Doriko's Bombastic Adventure. What a fun game you designed! Thanks for playing. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Hmm, perhaps I should come up with some new updates? to see Dodoko going on adventures in all kinds of places. No, wait. You must have spent a long time working on the game. It must be exhausting. We shouldn't make Lisa work too hard. Aw, thank you for being so considerate. But if it helps keep you happy while you stay inside the city, I'll be more than happy to spend as much time as needed. Of course, I understand that you prefer going on your own adventures whenever you like. The game is just meant to be a new way to pass the time. Anyway, I have some great news. And I've also brought a gift for you cuties. A gift? Actually, I have a gift for Mr. Unwary Knight and Paimon too. Hmm. We'll get to the gifts in a moment. 
let me tell you the news first. Is the incident Saturday resolved? Can Cleve play outside again? That's right. Two knights from the investigation team found the invasive species nest and swiftly disposed of it. The knights have also determined the cause of their invasion. The species were accidentally introduced to the lake by a merchant without any malicious intent, so the knights let her go after some lecturing and issuing a fine. <sighs> Luckily, they didn't cause too much trouble, but even Paimon thinks that merchant was way too careless. The water is certainly safe, most of the wine industry is safe. Is it time for gifts then? Can Klee go first? Of course. Klee's been returning home on time every day without being reminded by anyone. So, I've been wondering what you're up to lately. <laughs> when I was home at night, I looked through Alfredo's crafting book and learned to make this. So she can do alchemy, no? Oh. Whoa! It's gonna go down to Jeffy Dumpty! Yep! I made a figure that looks like the Dodoko from Dodoko Bombastic Adventure! Even though I can't make it throw real bombs. So how does your I hope Dodoko it'll remind you works. of the fun we had together and blast away your troubles and boredom. A big Dodoko toy! Oh, Paimon loves surprises like this! With this, it'll feel like we're adventuring with Klee and Dodoko wherever we go! Thank you for the creative and thoughtful gift, Klee. Dodoko will come with us on all our adventures from now on. So that's just in our pocket. I thought there was, there was uh, furniture. <laughs> I'm so happy you like my gift. I worked super hard on it. What's your gift, Lisa? I want to see. Well, I'm afraid my gift is a lot less creative than yours. It's a storybook about Dodoko's bombastic adventures. Hmm. <gasps> An adventure story! Yay! Oh, a whole storybook! The little cuties return to Mondstadt and join Klee on an adventure with Dodoko. Together, they defeated the bad spiky fish warriors and then enjoyed an afternoon tea. A most fitting way to end Dodoko's fantastic adventure. Did you plan out the whole story while designing the game? No. As the protagonists of the story, you, little cutie, and Klee all played an important part in bringing the story to life. I've left a blank spot in the book specially for illustrations. But I just thought of an even better idea. Since we're all here on this special occasion, why don't I take a photo of you together? Was that there? Sure! We got to see our friends and play games together! We're celebrating. Let's take a group photo. You gotta treasure this more choice in life. Come on, then, Mr. Honorary Knight and Paimon. Ready, Lisa? Oh, would this be a furniture? We had so picture. much fun today. Three, two, one. Didn't get to it. Hmm. Uh, I see. A memento. And it's over. Okay, it's too late. Uh. There's something here. Okay, the other. Mm -mm -mm. No, here's just that. Oh, there are rewards here. I didn't get them. Aren't there? Yeah. Of 
were somewhere officious. They didn't really know what they were doing. It wasn't their fault. Uh, so there isn't anything about <laughs> meeting Albedo and stuff, or the crew. Yeah, I didn't really get what, what was the point of the Good Hunter side story there. Uh, no clue. No Lisa. Um, <laughs> probably not. Such a short event, those don't usually have voiceover. They don't usually have characters with voiceover. Yeah, I kind of doubt there'll be anything here. <laughs> uh, what did she say about the the guy who ordered? I know of a single NPC around here, but I I don't think he will be the wealth guy that she was talking about. Just take a walk around here. See if there are any people around. <laughs> it was kind of weird for she to mention this place to not have anything around here. Especially now that the event is apparently over. Even Cliff vanished from there. So I think it would make more sense for people to be around here. I don't think so. I don't think anybody will be around. Ah! <laughs> no. They are. Ah! Investigative team. Sano's officer. Another nice. A helper white. A helper in white. Ponya of the investigation team reporting, we just completed carrying out an urgent mission call annihilate the invasive anglers. So I should have come here to talk to you guys before if I wanted more dialogue. And are now returning to camp. How's the situation? It went smoothly. The threat has been completely eliminated. You can rest it easy. Uh, do you have any further instructions? And that's so formal, like she's reporting to a senior officer. You kinda are an ordinary senior officer. Uh, should we also act the part? Uh, good job, signals officer Afonia. Please be sure to share what you've learned from this experience with the other knights. Like what? Like that? Captain Paimon, nicely put Paimon. 
Thank for approval, help in white. However, it may be too difficult for me to effectively teach my colleagues based on this experience. Although the operation of this detection equipment has been has already been greatly simplified, it still is beyond the capability of people who, who with weaker spatial cognition to operate. Uh, during operation, they jumble signals from the targets of similar sizes, as well as environmental noise interference can all easily overwhelm the user in a torrent of information. Forget about training the rest of the platoon, even just training the other signals officers to be familiar with its operations will be a gargantuan task requiring significant time. If it is to become standard equipment, it requires further improvements to make it more accessible, even at the cost of performance. What cognition, standard equipment, accessibility? You lost time one game. The details don't matter anyway, I'm not complaining to you too, but objectively analyzing the current situation. All I can say is Captain Albedo's minimal requirement of meeting one third of Mika's spatial cognition and anti-interference capabilities is still too much to ask. In any case, I will continue to help improve this piece of equipment until it is suitable for becoming standardized equipment or proven to be unsuitable. Once a relatively mature prototype is produced, would you two like to try it? Yeah, but I am not sure what it was. With it, you can confirm distant targets without visual contact. If you have any ways to attack enemies at range, you could launch a preemptive attack and gain a tactical advantage. That incredible. We could detect targets far away, but it can only be used on the water. That seems a bit limiting. No. We we have poles outside of the water. No worries by changing the alchemy potion used in the core. This equipment can detect the energy fluctuations in different elements. For example, when using an animal potion to detect targets, it can accurately detect targets like Hilcher Brutes within a range three times greater than the regular bow's attack range within Mondstadt. In situations like that, stop archers like Amber Delta Rider will be able to conduct non-line of sight shooting in groups and continuously adjust their firing angle based on observation reports from allies with higher vantage points. The enemies might never see the attack coming and would already have turned into wolf hooks by their arrows before they figured out what was happening. When you put it away, it sounds amazing. Enos doesn't usually use a bow, he just charges straight into enemies and beats them up, or sometimes just gets bombarded by those ring guards from a distance. So it's kind of maddening, Paimon has admitted that sometimes being able to attack a range really does have a lot of advantages. From just how far away could Amber hit a target if she was using such miraculous equipment? Even Paimon is really looking forward to find out. Is that just throwaway text or are they really going to implement something like that in the future? And I hate the invasive anglers. You know, I already have heard of this mission and heard my briefing, but we're likely too busy to have paid att much attention. Allow me to briefly introduce it once more. It, a certain merchant released some anglers native to Somero into Sider Lake, which then began to multiply rapidly. To prevent these invasive creatures from impacting the water quality of Sider Lake and affecting Mondstadt's wine industry, the Knights of Avonius dispatched a unit with strong recon capabilities to undertake a limited operation. I, Sinos Officer Fonia of the investigative team, and my colleagues, weapons specialist Ematol, received orders to use limited force to precisely eliminate the invasive species with minimal collateral damage. Currently, Ematol and I have deployed 457 bombs and cleared out 203 nests, all and all the invasive anglers, successfully eliminating the negative effects resulting from the introduction of the invasive species. Poor fishes. According to the calculations of the of other colleagues, it will take about a week for the 
residual explosive remnants in the water to fall to safe levels. If you could so precisely hit them, couldn't you guys try to fish them all out with nets and send it to good hunter? Such precise numbers, incredible. Thank you for your approval. This operation has also allowed me to verify a large quantity of information necessary for the development of the Sinus Officer Corps. As a cog in the Knights of Avonius Grain Machine, I have reaped significant benefits. Okay, you talk way too much. I hope you talk less. I'm a tall. <laughs> Now, what a wonderfully executed mission. Perhaps the captain will allow me to write a, the training manual when we create the bomb squad. Just sneak away. Uh, how is this mission progressing? Judging from how proudly you are talking to yourself, the mission must be going swimmingly. Oh, great honor in night and helper in white. I am happy to report that the mission to annihilate the invasive anglers has been completed. Fonia has double-checked and confirmed that I have cleared out all the angler nests. Not a single fish slipped through our net. However, there were a few nests that were quite tough. I had to use multiple bombs to get rid of them. The heavy rocks were really difficult to deal with. It sounds like this event would be much more interesting if even for a limited time they let us swim through Cider Lake. And destroyed nests ourselves. No wonder all the Spark Knights bombs, large or small, have such high ratio of explosive charge to weight. It's all about ensuring sufficient detonation pressure to crack hardened targets. She's incredible. Great job. That's difficult to understand. Great. More techno bubble that we can understand. However, strictly speaking, charge quantity isn't the answer to everything. The primary issue is that explosive energy disperses in every direction and is not focused in a single direction. Uh, could a cone-shaped casing be used to concentrate the explosive energy to, so it would penetrate thick defenses? Uh, then a cone-shaped case like that would have to be made of sturdy metal. That's something I need to research. Uh, right, uh, with extra bonus from this operation in, in a week's salary, I'll treat this pregnant to a few grain meals and thank her for her contributions to the operation. And also discuss with her how to make the, a type of bomb with new structure that can focus explosive energy. <laughs> Was with the sudden shift? You jump to that topic way too quickly. Yeah, it's great that you want to treat Klee to a meal, but you're the one who did all the work. Wouldn't you feel you did all the work for nothing if you just give away everything that you earned through your own hard work and time to others? Nothing of the sort. Everything I know about bombs, I either learned from the Spark Knight or I was inspired by her to invent myself. The Spark Knight hadn't shown me her bombs and explained so much about them I'd still be a regular knight without neither strength of arm nor skill of a blade. You don't have either in your knight. Why is a Noel a knight yet then? And I wouldn't have been able to complete the mission this time. That's why I honestly feel the credit for the success of this mission belongs to the Spark Knight. This pregnant is not interesting more, but she's definitely into food. Wow, such irrefutable, solid logic. Woohoo, this pregnant has new apprentice. At least studying is going to pay for the new apprentice. No, it's not like that really. And this pregnant shall always be completely free. A bone like that between master and apprentice, that will be a constraint upon this pregnant. I do not wish to impose such trouble on her. I'm also just, well, observe the Spark Knight from afar and study how she crafts and deploys bombs. Right, just treat me as a copycat bomb maker in the wild. And you are... Emoto, weapon specialist of the investigation team, reporting to the great honor knight and the helper in white. 
You may have heard of me, but since you are captain level heroes who's seen many knights, it's so it's understandable if you don't remember me. Yeah, I don't remember either of you. Uh, if you don't mind, I thought the name kind of sounds familiar. Uh, if you don't mind, please allow me to give you a brief introduction to some of my responsibilities in the investigation team. In addition to basic military intelligence reports, we also investigate, collect and analyze combat related data for the knights, finding ways to continuously improve tactics and combat capabilities. Therefore, learning the habits of the knights and modifying their weapons Equipment are both part of our responsibilities. The so-called weapon specialist, in truth, is a knight who is responsible for testing experimental weapons. I was sent to carry out the mission to annihilate the invasive anglers. I am happy to report that I have successfully eradicated all the invasive anglers in the Cider Lake and have had the chance to test out a prototype bomb. I am completely satisfied, so you must be a skill combatant. Are you also a master of weaponry? Not at all, I know nothing about combat. If I were to take up a sword, even a wild boar could take on 20 of me. But I'm tougher than nails. Uh, when I was trying to analyze the formula for jump dumpty, I went through, let me count, 27 instincts and the blast enemy flying in 19 of them. But after bandaging myself up and applying splints, I returned to the team's garrison the next day and went back to work. My colleagues were very understanding and helped me keep the incidents hidden from Captain Albero, otherwise I would have missed out on work. Following the sparks is not for the faint of heart or the undisciplined. Uh, you don't have to push yourself that hard, you could have asked your captain for some leave. Now, I was really worried about this knight's mental state. If we get a chance, we should ask Albedo to keep an eye on her. Caring about nothing but your work is a bit much. Yeah, I don't think Albedo would have been here actually for some so such a small voiceover. You probably would have so nothing here. Uh, and who was Albedo's friend that they were talking about? Mika? That she mentioned? I don't remember what they were talking about. Uh, that she wasn't supposed to cause trouble for them or something. Uh... Uh, are they around here? I didn't really, really pay attention, but I think there would be. Ah, oh, I'll check it eventually, some other time. Okay. Ah, yeah. oh, that I got here. Mm. Oh, I can read it. A fair tale that lists a world based on special game, the Doku's Bomb Task Adventure. Featuring Spark Knight, Dodoko, and Special Jump Dumpties, the Honor Knight, and their white colored helper, helper in their victory over the fishes. Oh. Well. Uh, in the calm waters of Cider Lake, the fish of Mondstadt were enjoying quiet and happy lives. But then, a never before seen army of spiky fish appeared. They were clad in strange armor and carried small, short swords. Ferocious and oppressive, they soon took over the homes of the local fish. Ha, huh, this belongs to the spiky fish kings now. To reclaim their homeland and eject the invaders, the fish of Mondstadt asked the strong and imaginative Dodoko and the cheerful and kind Spark Knight for help. Jumpy, uh, we can use Jump Dumpty this time. The powerful Jump Dum Jumpy Dumpty bomb would destroy the house of the fish were trying to re reclaim and the lake bed would be utterly wrecked another idea was needed the clever dodoko and the spark knight discussed the problem at length and came up with the super special super safe super reliable jumpy dumpty small and precise enough to blow up only the bad spiky fish leaving the innocent fishes unharmed 
but the name Super Special Super Safe Super Reliable Jumpy Dumpty was a little long and the Spark Knight kept saying it wrong, so they called it so they called the new device the Special Dump Jumpy Dumpty instead. Wait, allow me to listen out. Uh, it turned out that the Doko's long ears weren't just for show, they were great for picking up so sounds. Once thrown into the lake, Special jump Dumpties would swim toward wherever the spiky fish were active, and the Doko would hear it all. And that allowed the Special Jumpy Dumpties to work their magic at exactly the right spot the in the spiky fish. But the enemies seemed prepared. There were so many of them. The Spark Knight and Dodoko rushed back and forth, not even stopping to eat. They were almost out of special jump dumpties. You think you two are enough to beat us, conquerors of the five seas? But what were the five seas the spiky fish spoke of? Could they have overpowered the fish in other places as well? Flux Flumoxid. Flumoxid. I I don't know the word. Dodoko and the Spark Knight returned to the Athenium to inquire with the scribe witch. Without needing to crack open a book, the witch uh, chuckled softly. Perhaps this 5C simply referred to the north, east, south, east, and the center of Cider Lake. It finally dawned on the Spark Knight and Dodoko, they fall in for a fish story. Unfortunately, the slippery spike fishes had seized this opportunity to construct a sturdy barrier reef. They then expertly hid among the aquatic plants, kicking off Nivio's game of hide and seek with Dodoko and the Spark Knight. Now, the stunning fishes would be an even greater thorn in their sight. Dodoko and the Spark Knight thus called in help, the honor in night and the helper in white. With ample experience between them, the two offered just the advice they needed. Looking at the map, the Ordinary Knight said, Just like with any adventure, you must first determine the direction in which to advance. Dodoko understood, by finding a way to control the direction of the blast, they could enhance the special Jumpy Dumpty's power and reach spiky fish further away. Between mouthfuls of dessert, the Helper in White said, and if you can make the explosion take all sorts of forms, they'd be even harder to evade. The Spark Knight then had an idea. They made a sp the special jump them to explode in the shape of different desserts. They could lure the gluttons spike fish and wipe them out in one blast. So Dodoko and the Spark Knight upgraded the special jump them to with new ability. This new improved special jump dumpty could explode in various shapes that could pass through the lake plants and reach the enemy soldiers hiding in even the trickiest locations. Even if they couldn't deal with the unyielding stones, they could circumvent them, delivering an explosive surprise to the nasty fish behind it. Armed with these special jump dumpties, Dodoko and the Spragonite no longer had to worry about being ambushed by the spike fish. One after another, the spike fish were defeated. When word of this finally reached the spiky fish kings, they swelled up angrily and stormed in to join the battle. In the ordinary knight and helper in white's experience, Bobo's blobs are, were always bad news. When they looked over to the opposing side and saw the hulking kings glimmering gold, they wondered. How were there suddenly so many of them? No matter how they sliced it, this was all rather fishy. Between mouthfuls of dessert, the helper white said, There's nothing to be afraid of. Maybe the skins just use berries to paint themselves gold. Looking at the map, uh, the honorary knight said, If they die themselves with illogical lotuses, their strength would only increase by 50%. At the end of the day, a fish is still a fish. Indeed, to them, king might have been more like a title, something that looked impressive and intimidating to others. Their, color, their golden color did not necessarily mean that they were any stronger. The Spark Knight and Dodoko breathed sighs of relief. 
Now they wouldn't need to school these fishes late into the night and make everyone worry by returning home so late. They reached home the home stretch, it was time to make quick work of this puzzle. Emboldened, emboldened by their king, the soldiers mounted another defense amidst the stones and aquatic plains. They were undoubted. Doroko, the spark knight, the ordinary knight, and the helper in white had come up with a clever countermeasure. How should they deploy their limited numbers, number of special jumping dumpties to defeat all their foes in just a few blasts? The spark knight glanced over at the helper in white, who was circling the ordinary knight, and thought of something. Wait a minute, if the spiky fish only know how to defend against special jump dumpties from the front, then all we need to do is go around them, right? The spiky fish could only move in the water, but the spark knight and Doroko could freely walk around the pond edge to where they were undefended, and then launched their special jumpy dumpties from there. With smart, precise blasts, the spiky fish were completely blown out, blown out of the water and sent scattered away in defeat. During their retreat, they even retrieved their things, leaving not one bit of trash inside their lake. Doroko, the special jump dumpty, the spark knight, the honor knight, and the helper in white had thus defeated defended Cedar Lake together. Life was going swimmingly for the fish of most that once more. To reward themselves for their hard work, Dodoko, the special jump dumpties, the spark knight, the honor knight, and the helper in white rolled out a tablecloth and heartily enjoyed a lakeside picnic. On the menu was minchelli, caramel cookies, berry cake, and tomato chili, a sweet, spicy, and refreshing spread. The threat to Cedar Lake was now quelled. Dodoko and the Spark Knight had saved the day, and who knows, perhaps the fruit of this strange encounter, the creation of the special jump dumpties, might come in handy again someday. I'm not sure, does that mean that we have this similar event again? Or that we will uh get those bombs eventually okay uh i think we're done i'm not gonna spend on wishes now because i already got a hotel i'm gonna save for next banner meluzines are beautiful creatures they are and the pride of fontaine be sure to befriend them